Welcome to Cloud Security Basics, a series where we explain the ins and outs of securing your application on Google Cloud. Sound fun? Then stick around because in this episode, you'll learn good practices for securing your application with Cloud IAM. It's been a while, Cloud Detective. I see you understand the flexibility and capabilities of the cloud. As you know, it makes it easier to work faster and collaborate more effectively. But it also introduces new responsibilities and security risks. And sometimes those threats are not on the outside. Accounts can get hacked, credentials leaked, and employees disgruntled. Whether accidental or willful, Internal users represent the biggest threat to your organization's cloud security. For your sake, Detective, I hope you can keep the wrong people from accessing the wrong resources at the wrong time. Okay, here's what we know. Companies need to make sure that only the right people can access only the right resources at only the right time. One way to keep bad actors out would be to cut access for everyone and have a few trusted people dole out access manually. But keeping productivity high and getting the most out of your cloud platform depends on employees having access to the resources and assets they need with the least amount of friction or delay. And while just manually allowing access every time a person or application needs resources, might work for a very, very small organization, that would quickly grow unwieldy as the teams grow or begin to work remotely. So in order for our organization to grow and function, we need a better way to manage access. Luckily, Google Cloud provides a lot of tools and services to protect its users. And this seems like a good time to use Google Cloud's identity and access management, actually. So IAM is Google Cloud's unified system for managing resource access, assigning user permissions, and controlling cloud application service use. It unifies all access and control and centralizes it into one place. Resources are the fundamental lowest level components that make up all Google Cloud services. So some examples would include Compute Engine VMs, Pub Subtopics, Cloud Storage Buckets, and App Engine Instances. Cloud IAM lets organizations keep track of everything going on in their Google Cloud environment and prevent unauthorized resource access. Let's research more to know how I can use this to stop those threats. Cloud IAM's access management system breaks down into a few basic parts. There's members, resources, permissions, roles, policies, and groups. Members, or identities, can be a Google account for end users, a service account used to manage apps and virtual machines, a Google group, or a Google Workspace cloud identity domain able to access a resource. The member's identity is usually the associated email address, service account, or group, or domain name. Resources. These are the fundamental components that make up all Google Cloud services like VMs, storage buckets, and more. The organizations, folders, and projects used to organize them are also considered resources. And permissions, which are very fine-grained access control on a particular resource. Roles. A role is a collection of permissions, and permissions determine what operations are allowed on a resource. When you grant a role to a member, you grant them all the permissions the role contains. Google Cloud has predefined built-in roles, and you can also create custom roles. Policies, which bind a set of Cloud IAM members to a role. And if you want to define who has what type of access on a resource, you create a policy and attach it to that resource. The policy also has other information, such as auditing configuration, but we're gonna focus on identity aspects for now. And groups. Groups are used to help you manage users at scale. Each member of a Google group inherits the identity and access management roles that you granted to that group. And this means that you can use a group's membership to manage users' roles instead of granting IAM roles to individual users. Hmm, 
So how should I use I am to protect my organization from inside threats? I could start by using groups from the beginning. This way, the security admin wouldn't have to manually change permissions as employees get hired, fired, or move throughout the organization because the right policies would be assigned to anyone I move into the correct group. This would also make it a lot easier to minimize mistakes because instead of assigning roles and permissions to a specific employee, we could assign them to groups and then add employees to the correct groups. This works even if you already have an organizational hierarchy and groups in an existing system like Active Directory. And in that case, you can continuously sync that configuration to Cloud IAM, providing a single source of truth for group membership and reducing the chance of a mistake. And once we have groups, we could also make sure to name the groups descriptively so that it's obvious to tell at a glance what each of the roles has access to. And this should significantly reduce mistakes that come from assigning the wrong roles to the wrong groups. A good strategy here would be to make a nested folder hierarchy apparent with naming. One general rule would be to begin with the organization name and then expand out the folder tree with the project name. That's it. I can use these components to shore up my system's defenses. Let's see what Brad Actor thinks about that. Ah, detective. It seems like you foiled my attempt again. Somehow. You figured out that properly using Cloud IAM greatly reduces the risk of security violations. I'm surprised you even picked up on using groups to simplify the process of managing access rights for employees that move around your organization. But what about the access you've given to non-human entities, like applications that need to access your secure resources to function? Have you secured those? For your sake, I hope you have, because next time I'm not focusing on your employees but instead on your scripts and applications. So there you have it, another episode of Cloud Security Basics. Next episode, we'll focus on using service accounts to protect automated access to your cloud resources. So stay tuned for the rest of the Cloud Security Basics series, because when it comes to security, you can't let bad actors win.